Good morning uh, from Suzuka. It's getting a bit wet now. If, if you're up early, great for joining us. But it's um, been a bit of a mixed session, Karun, uh, so far. Obviously, a lot of cars out there early trying to maximise this dry running because this rain looks set for the day and it looks like it's going to be kind of undrivable conditions this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. I brought my Malaysian wardrobe and I had to go running off to borrow somebody's jacket from the, from the motorhome because you're right, the rain looks like it's going to be set for the rest of the day uh, and it's chilly as well. The forecast for, for race day, fortunately, is a lot better still. And in fact, even qualifying tomorrow looks okay. But uh, should we wander into the garage and yeah. see what's going on? I guess you're built for the rain. I guess your skin's more waterproof than what well, material's going to be on your trousers, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, that's one theory anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just started. And um, yeah. we actually saw, especially the Ferraris, they ran three sets of tyres. I think we had a more normal programme purely uh, because we had some new aerodynamic bits to try. Obviously, Felipe's got a new rear wing on. Um, and Lance just uh, obviously in the older spec, just uh, doing a proper back-to-back. -back. But you'll see the workload in the garage today is um, it's not too bad. Everything seems quite calm. I guess with ex what's expected um, with that session, you're just trying to gather as much as you can and, and not uh, not overcomplicate things um, given the weather and where it is. But equally, when you get out in the rain with these new parts, you want to see if the the wing stability obviously carries on with water because we know that can increase uh, this how sense how sensitive it is. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, even in the, if, if these conditions, as you say, we pan around here, Sophie, you can have a look in the, um, in the pit lane. You know, it, it's wet, quite clearly, but it's not pouring rain, is it? This is sort of intermediate conditions. A and if you were to do, you know, back-to-back -back stuff and, and run sensors on the car, you'd still get a gauge, wouldn't you, of, of what those new bits are doing? Yeah, you would. I guess the biggest, the biggest risk of running in the rain is obviously you only get so many sets of tyres. You can trade a set of intermediates at the end of practice to get another fresh set into qualifying the race. But when you're on these flyaways, you certainly want to keep your tyres, especially um, for race day when the when the points are given out. But like you say, if the conditions are good enough, I think the cars will be out there. Uh, we know Lance certainly this year has uh, certainly outperformed uh, where we believed the, the car would be in the wet and done a very good job. Uh, very brave, given I think he's young. <laughs> Maybe that's the, that's the difference. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a such a big thing uh, to be have a good car in both conditions and have that confidence like you say that all these sensors are given the right readings but more importantly the driver has just got the confidence in the car yeah so the mechanics all working hard it's about 11 45 in the morning here local time so um th you know they'll, they'll get a solid hours work in one day before they get a quick sandwich and then free practice too at two o'clock but you know no real dramas no real problems obviously uh, for the team but we saw carlos Sainz have a a bit of a shine. I mean, it's a, it's a great circuit around here, though, isn't it? I love driving here. I'm sure you did as well. It's a super circuit. It's the only place I've scared myself, really. Degna 1, Degna 2 in qualifying. And uh, like you say, that's that's the big challenge around here. It's just such high speed. Already the drivers are saying it's the toughest they've seen for the neck. So, you know, when you expect Sunday, when the temperatures obviously come up, where that's going to go. And um, it's just relentless. It's absolutely relentless, Sector 1. And even into Spoon second part of spoon onto the back straight before you start climbing back up the hill and that's when all the efficiency starts to come into a car and uh, you certainly the mercedes-benz power will stand out there uh where it is yeah and we can see i mean this enormous grandstand here obviously they're all hiding for cover at the moment and getting a bit of food while the track's quiet but come race day this is an incredible atmosphere isn't it when the japanese fans are out in force they are dedicated and uh you know, I, d I don't think that gives the impression of how busy this place gets. Even on a Thursday, that grandstand's full when they're doing the autograph signing. And uh, they just want to embrace Formula One. You know, they want to come here and see the guys working. Whether they've got binoculars, cameras, with extra zoom in here. Um, Japanese fans are very committed. But it's such a great place to come. Um, very different culture to anywhere we ever go, isn't it? And yep. uh, I guess that's, that's kind of what it is. They're big racing fans around here, obviously. And there's a lot of Williams fans here. Because obviously when we first raced in Suzuka... In 87, I say we, but when F1 was racing in 87, um, Williams was a Honda team at the time. And uh, I think Damon Hill, the 96 world champion, is doing a demo in the Williams Honda from then. And there's a, there's a big display, isn't there, for um, cars celebrating the 40 years of Williams? There is plenty of cars here, plenty of cars demonstrating. I've actually got a good friend of mine here who's got an ex-Rosberg car, world championship car. He's actually, the, the organisers have flown his car out along with him to wow. come and do it. So... Uh, they have really got into it, which is nice because obviously the success of Williams around here is a big thing. Uh, I guess it goes back to the Honda, like you say. 
uh, what it is, but um, you know we should be more focusing on trying to get the best out of this weekend. Um, and ultimately, that's all a bonus. But um, you know this is down to where the where things move on to for here. And it's nice to see when you see these upgrades coming through. Uh, the boys are working hard. You know, you were talking about a sandwich for their lunch. I hope I hope they're getting more than a sandwich because they were having a sandwich for <laughs> the breakfast because the rear wing never actually arrived at the circuit till midnight last night. So we're building that this morning. So that shows you, you know, how Formula One's evolving and. Even at the second rear wing was only arriving, I think, between these two sessions. So Lance hopefully may get a chance to try that as well. But that's often the case with these flyways, isn't it? I mean, I've up been on the paddock yesterday and there were so many engineers and chief mechanics, you know, on the phone with logistic people and customs people and waiting to get bits at the last moment. That's often the challenge, especially in the second half of a flyaway. Um, you know, you've used a lot of bits up, for example, in Malaysia, or you've got bits coming out. And it's just relentless, as you say. This is the ultimate aerodynamic correlation you're going to get through Suzuka. I mean, Silverstone's big on aero, but I think this track requires more than anything. And if you can get a good correlation from here, that's why I think they flood the new bits into this track and really see that make sure all the sensors are working. And it's more about evolving the car for next year. You know, it's just going to be an evolution of what this car is uh, because obviously the rules are fairly similar. I think we're losing the monkey seat and a few other little bits, but... The finer details of what the car, if you can get as much performance on the car here, you can kind of see what the weakness is. And I guess that's into the crucial stage because the big sh the big chassis items, are certainly for next year, I think will be well underway and moulds will be getting made. So yeah. uh, it's almost kind of too late. But, uh, you know, it kind of gives you that direction to lead where you need, uh, if you need extra rear downforce or equally just efficiency. Yeah, I mean, there's um, if you look in the garage here, there's, there's a proper hive of activity here on... Felipe's side of the garage. Felipe himself will be out um, in the back of the hospitality units. For those of you who saw yesterday, the paddock is quite spread out here, uh, and the engineer's office are all back there, so they'll be pouring over the data. Lunch at the engineer's office uh, desk, I imagine, as they, they look through all the data from this morning and then decide on the, the next plan. Gets into your program, doesn't it? Um, you know, there was plenty of test items, but when you see the weather forecast, that's when uh, the engineers come into their own and they start reshuffling things start to move it around um, it's just uh, managing the best you can over the weekend and I guess uh, your immediate competitors are the ones that are the threat so I guess for us it's Renault, Toro Rosso of course India obviously got a decent gap but um, you know still within sight so yeah it's uh, one of these things you get into and uh, like we always say it's, uh, it's more about evolving yourself over the weekend and making yourself feel comfortable and Lance obviously getting himself up to speed and crucial that he got that small run in the dry uh, giving us a new track to him and he's a rookie because uh, on Sunday afternoon it can be quite uh, quite a challenge if he went straight into it without any learning. Excellent. Look, so we will join you on Williams TV on uh, Sunday, as Paul said. Um, the Grand Prix should be a dry day by then, but uh, it's going to be a bit of a cold afternoon. See you then.